All right. So Sam, we, uh, just like that, we were just talking off air and, uh, love to kick off the podcast and this conversation, just giving the audience some context around a, how long you've been in the business and where is it that you sell real estate? Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me, Brandon. So I got my real estate license in July of 2022, right towards the end of the pandemic. I actually started my classes pretty close to the beginning of the pandemic. Just took me a while to get through it. And I sell real estate in Dallas, Texas. Love it. So you're in a great market. Uh, you've been doing this now for about a year and a half or so, uh, coming up on two years, actually, right? Right. And I started doing it full time in May of 2023. So just a little less than a year full time now. Got it. And how long have you you and I actually been working together now, just for, for context purposes? Well, it's really only been about a month, not that long. Yeah, which is why I wanted to have you on the show. So I want to talk about what you uh, were doing to in this business to acquire new clients, what were you doing uh, from a lead generation standpoint before we started working together versus what you're doing now. So let's just kind of go back for a minute and talk to us about what the last year and a half looked like when it comes to you succeeding in this business of real estate sales. Sure. Well, yeah, like you said, to kind of back it up before real estate, I was a middle school and high school orchestra teacher, which was awesome. Had a ton of fun doing it, but there's other things I wanted to do in my life. So I ultimately decided to pursue a career in real estate sales. Now, like a lot of agents, when I first got my license, I didn't realize how much of a sales job it was. The, the business. So I was really lucky towards the beginning of my career that I had a few deals in my circle come my way to kind of help get me started. But once those dried up, it was like, wait, where's all my business? I need to figure out a way to, to close some more deals since obviously nothing's just coming to me right now. And that's when I found your YouTube videos. Yeah, let, let's, let's dive in there for one second. I think what you just touched on, Sam, is a reality that I think a lot of people don't realize when they uh, decide to change careers or get into real estate sales in, in that it is a direct sales career and a lot of people, it attracts people in this industry for many, many different reasons. You've probably got your own reasons on why you wanted to get into real estate, but what is it that you think that um, causes people to not realize what it is that they're getting into? Yeah, it's a great question. I think there's a lot of factors that go into it. Honestly, I think part of it is as an industry, we don't really represent totally transparency what we do to acquire clients mm. yeah yeah Me meaning uh to your point earlier most people that get into real estate believe that magically they get their real estate license and business kind of comes their way as like this inbound service type role correct 100 percent. and it's not until you get in the business do you find well wow uh, I'm licensed, where are all the people at? That you actually have to be the one to go out into the marketplace and generate business proactively, which is why this business is so difficult. Is that what you've experienced? Yeah, we're on the exact same page there. Yeah, yeah. So what was it that you were doing uh, before? And then we'll get into what you're doing now. Like what was your, what did you try as a new agent? And uh, what are some of the things that maybe didn't work? Or what are some of the things that you tried that did work? And then we'll transition into what we have you doing now. Sure. So I've, I've definitely done my fair share of open houses and I have had some success with them. I actually just closed a buyer that I met on an open house I had from one of my listings like a year ago. We just stayed in touch over that year and ended up getting him a deal closed. But Really, I haven't had much business that came from open houses. Once I moved into prospecting over the phone, it was like a huge difference in the actual results that I was getting. But like I said, I have had some from my sphere and I've had referrals from past clients and those kinds of things. But the vast majority of my business has come from outbound phone calling for sure. Yeah. And, and the reason for that is real simple. You and I already touched on it. I mean, the reason why that is the case is through, I mean, if you look at the actual process or activity of prospecting, it's you going out there proactively generating or initiating rather conversations with people that may need your services. And so when you're in control of that versus waiting for people to find you, 
crazy things happen. So let's get into it. Um, why don't you kind of break down the numbers for the past 30 days, and then we'll get into some more of the tactical and strategies. Yeah, so I was checking out my numbers just before we got on this call. And I did my business plan. It, it came out that I needed to do about 28 contacts a day to make my uh, GCI goal for the year. And I've been averaging 34 contacts a day, which is awesome. I've been on four listing appointments since I joined the program and three of them have signed the listing agreement. And that fourth one, he just hasn't signed yet because he's trying to figure out how he's going to get his tenant out of there. But then yeah. I'm working with him too. So it's incredible, right? In 30 days, you're able to generate almost a listing every single week, whereas before we weren't able to get those results. Let's really talk to the audience um, about how is it that you're able to produce such amazing results in such a short amount of time? Why don't you walk us through kind of like what your your day looks like, and then we'll, we'll break that down uh, on the skills piece. So what does the average day look like? What is it that I've asked you to do that has caused you to get uh, three listings in the last 30 days? It's, it's very simple, but it's not easy. Every day, 8 a.m. for an hour, I dial the new expireds, cancels, and for sale by owners. And then if there's any time after I get today's, I'll circle back and call yesterday's or maybe make a second attempt at today's, just kind of depending on how many pull up in my, in my dialer. Then from there, the next call block starts an hour after that. And then I call uh, absentee owners. I do that for an hour and then I call neighborhoods like circle prospecting. And sometimes there's days when I'll do a block of absentee owners and for whatever reason, nobody's picking up. So I'm short of my contacts. Honestly, I'll just pivot and call for rent by owners for some of that time because I noticed they have a really good answer rate. But like my main thing is I want to really make that contact goal every day. Love it. I love it. So and we'll break down kind of uh, some more things in just a second. But the elephant in the room, so to speak, I think that for agents watching or listening to the podcast, they're, they're saying to themselves, Sam, yeah, but how do you like, how is it that you got yourself? I mean, here, here's a guy, this is you, that was in education. Uh, you get into real estate sales, not knowing it's direct outbound uh, s selling. How did you get yourself into being able to do this from a, from a mindset perspective? Because that's the hardest part, as you and I know. It's actually believing that you can do this activity of outbound prospecting because we deal with a lot of head trash. So for agents watching this say, I know I should be making the calls. I just can't bring myself to do it, Sam. How have you been able to overcome that? Well, it's really just a question of how bad do you want it? I mean, if, if your real estate career doesn't work out, are you content to go back to your nine to five or go do something else. If that's the case, hey, maybe calling on the phone and, and facing a lot of rejection and being turned down and hung up on, maybe that's not for you. But if you if you are 100%, I'm going to do this, nothing's going to get in my way. Then all you got to do is follow the plan, put in the work, and you will get the results. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well said. You know, I'm kind of curious, and then we'll pivot into something else. But, you know, if you if you close three or four deals in a month in your market, this might not be the case, but I'm curious, will that represent more income than you made in one year as a teacher? It's it's pretty close. It's pretty close. It, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I was going to say, I think about that all the time because there's a lot of teachers that get into this business, right? And uh, it's funny, all the time I'll work with them and say, Brandon, I made this month what I made last year. And so anyway, that's uh, another conversation. So let's break down these conversations, right? Because I think a lot of agents say, okay, I understand uh, that... I should be prospecting every day. I understand that loud and clear, but I do it, Sam, and I still don't get the results you're getting. How is it that you're calling expired? You're calling the same people I'm calling. I'm in Dallas, Texas. I'm calling these people. I'm brand new, but I'm not getting a listing a week. Can you break down for the audience some of the skills that you've learned in the last 30 days? And I know I'm throwing a lot at you. Uh, from a training perspective and a coaching perspective, but can you break down maybe one, two, three skills that you've learned that helps you convert over the phone? Sure, yeah. So I'll, I'll try to do two or three things. I think first, it starts with the mindset. Like if you're going into the day with the mindset of, oh, Brandon said I gotta make these dials. I know I gotta make these dials. Let me just get through these so I can get to what I really wanna do, which is go show 10 buyers, a bunch of homes they're never gonna offer on. Then, I mean, 
of course you're not going to succeed. You're probably going to let it ring three, four times. Oh, I guess I don't want to pick up. Let me hang up and go to the next one. Or you'll make it through the whole list and you don't get any contacts and you get discouraged and go find some other shiny object. But it, it's more of a, I'm going to do this. This is what I've committed to, regardless of the result. I know this is what's going to get me to where I need to be in the long run. So if you go into it with that as the goal versus I want to walk away with a signed listing agreement by the end of this one hour call block, then I think you're more likely to have results. So that's the main thing. But then in terms of like getting into the nitty gritty, I mean, you got to know your scripts, but you, you got to understand what the script is getting at exactly beyond just the words on the page, why you're asking these questions. That way, if the prospect throws a curveball at you and you kind of get away from the actual reading down the script, you know where to take that conversation. I think where a lot of agents get screwed up is they've read the script a few times or maybe they're even reading off the page. And then when the conversation goes another direction, they don't know what to say and they get totally stumped. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. I mean, when we look at the first one, having blind faith, what gives you blind faith that this in fact will work? Is it because you seeing other agents in the community doing the same thing that you're doing and the result, the results that they're getting, or is it something else? Well, I've been a huge fan of yours for almost a year now, and I've, I've probably watched all your YouTube videos. I've probably seen some of them like five, 10 times. So just like the constant exposure to that, I think has really helped me build a solid foundation. And then when I finally decided that, you know what, I, I know I wanna be in Brandon's coaching at some point, like, fuck it. Today's the day. And ever since yeah. I, I made that decision, I mean, it's been great. Well, tell us about that. I mean, because that's a big step. I mean, it's not easy taking that next step and, you know, trusting yourself enough to invest in yourself and commit to this thing. Um, what, what was it that made you make that decision? And then what's it been like in the last 30 days? So I was making calls before. It wasn't like I wasn't doing the work, but I, I wasn't converting at the rate that I wanted to. And I felt like I didn't have systems in place to where some of the leads were falling through the cracks or I was getting like constant overwhelm. But what joining the coaching program has kind of allowed me to do is build out a system, follow what I need to do when I need to do it. And it I, there's like less brain fog. I feel like I have total clarity on, on what I need to be doing at any given time. Yeah, yeah, it makes a ton of sense. And so, you know, when we look at conversions, um, do you have, I don't know if you've got this in your numbers, but what is your contact to lead uh, conversion? I'm just curious what it, where it's at these days. Oh, I don't think I have that number right in front of me. Yeah, that's all right. We'll look at it. Um, so let's, let's kind of go over to the presentation. Now, this is what, what I have learned from coaching agents. You know, I think a lot of them are focused on the front end you know, the, the, the scripts and the dialogues and the objection handlers and the, the mindset and all of the stuff you just talked about, we're really focused on that. But what I've learned is that no matter how an agent finds themselves at a kitchen table, when they're face to face with a consumer who's interviewing them to take the listing, to me, that's the, that's the part where the rubber meets the road. That's the real determining factor on one's level of success or failure when it comes to building a listing-based business. What can you share that you've learned uh, that helps you deliver a compelling presentation? Because I'd have to, I have to uh, think that in Dallas, Texas, Sam, you're going, up with some, you're going up against some really, really talented agents and you're winning anyways. So what is it that you've learned that's helping you uh, convert? Yeah, I'm smiling because, I mean, this is just a testament to your skills. You're you're reading everything that I'm saying and figuring out where you can take the conversation. So you can already see, okay, so Sam was making the calls. He just wasn't getting the conversions. So that must have been because his listing presentation wasn't very strong. And you're exactly right. I knew I had phone skills. I did. Now, they, have they gotten better since I joined the coaching program? 100%. But where I was lacking was in closing the deal at the table. And ever since I joined the coaching program, the very first part of that coaching is about how to give a world-class listing presentation with a value proposition that no other agent is going to be able to compete on. And I mean, with that being the very first thing that you learn, because I was already doing some calling and I did have a database, those appointments that I did set, 
I was able to convert them like this because that was like the missing piece for me. Does that make sense? Hundred percent. And that's why we've we've switched it all like that. You know, it wasn't always like that. You know, I made that switch uh, not that long ago, but I know now that the number one thing we've got to put into an agent's business is exactly what you just said. We have got to get the presentation dialed in so that, well, let me ask you, does it give you the confidence then to get on the phone because you've got this presentation to deliver? Well, it's just one of those things like if if they are completely opposed to working with an agent or meeting with me, then I, I'm just moving on to other prospects. I want to find the prospects that are willing to interview me, give me a chance, because I know once I get there, no other agent's going to be able to beat me. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So talk to me about follow up and how important that's that is and how important it will be in you able to to get to the goals that you've set. So one one thing on this that was really interesting, there was like a, a month towards the end of 2023 when I wasn't prospecting and I, I switched brokerages. And so part of that switch was I had to move all my info from one database to another. Well, when I did that, I had all these leads that I generated from cold calling. And so I went and looked them all up while I was moving them to see which one sold. And like 50% of them were leads that I generated from a call that ended up selling with another agent. So I was so pissed because mm. it was I could have closed those deals if I would have just followed up. Yeah, and it's so incredible. Yeah, what the follow up looks like, um, to your credit, the, the program has it kind of uh, set up so that you're coming from a few different directions. So yeah. if you're dealing with somebody who just doesn't answer the phone all the time, they're getting direct mail or they're getting text messages or, you know, you could be knocking on the door. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Um, any tips or, or things that you've done recently that's helped you to increase contact rates? Because a lot of the things is, well, nobody answers or, or you know, my, my number shows up as spam or uh, anything, especially with expireds, right? As you know, it's probably the lowest contact rate out of any lead source. Is there anything that you've learned recently that's helped you to increase that contact rate? So on expired specifically, uh, I don't know if other people do this, but I send them a text message literally right after they don't pick up. And th I mean, there's probably a pretty low percentage of them that do respond, but if they text me back, I'll get in a text conversation with them and I'm trying to get them on the phone. Because yeah. I think sometimes people just get frustrated with all the calls, so they're not going to pick up the phone anymore, but I don't want to lose out on that opportunity. And if I've tried to call them three, four days in a row, they're not texting me back, whatever, I might just go knock on the door. And if they don't answer, I'll, I'll leave something there. And I've certainly gotten calls from that because if you make it that far in the process, chances are you're the only agent left standing. Yeah. So you're not just calling somebody one time and then hoping that you get them on that one time. You have multiple attempts with multiple different uh, avenues of communication, whether that be call, text, going to see them at their door. You're doing multiple different things in order to initiate that first conversation, correct? Yeah. And that's kind of where I was losing out on a, a lot of the meat previously was uh, I would call around the entire Metroplex. And I'm sure, you know, Dallas Fort Worth is a huge area. So yeah, I, I mean, there's a ton of expireds, but then I'd be driving 45 minutes an hour to go on an appointment with somebody. That's time I could have been spending on the dialer. So now yeah. I, I call a smaller area, but I'm making more attempts. Yep, love it. So as you look forward, Sam, you, you've you learned a lot in a very short amount of time. You've actually produced a result in a very short amount of time that I would imagine has got you pretty excited for the future. Can you walk us walk me through, I'm curious as your coach, what do your goals look like now moving forward based on what you've been able to accomplish in just a short amount of time? Have they changed? Do you look at the future to say, okay, wow, uh, now that I'm learning this skill set, maybe I can accomplish a lot more than I even uh, plan to? Well, I set a, a GCI goal at the end of last year for 2024 that was, I feel like it was ambitious, but not like totally unrealistic. And being in the coaching and like tracking my numbers has kind of put it in perspective, the activities I need to be doing to actually get there. And so before I was in the coaching, I wasn't really tracking my numbers and following a business plan like that. So I probably wouldn't have made it. But I mean, if I do exactly what I've worked the numbers back on to get there, I'm confident I'll be able to get or meet that or uh, beat that goal this year. Yeah. Uh, are you comfortable sharing that goal? $300,000 GCI. It's massive. I mean, that's, that's a, that's a massive goal. And, uh, you know, when you say it, it kind of brings a smile to your face, right? Because it opens up a lot of possibilities for your life. And so I'm excited for you. You know, I guess the last one for me is 
if you can rewind and start this whole thing over transitioning out of uh education into this career what are some of the things you would have done differently right right from day one i would have taken one of those commission checks from one of those sphere deals and got on the coaching right away because i think back on all that business that i lost by not following up and being overwhelmed and not having systems i mean if i would have got half that i probably would have done 200 gci last year wow well, I appreciate you saying that. I sure uh, appreciate that. And uh, I just, you know, the thing that I love about the work that I do is seeing someone like yourself with the story that you've created for yourself in just a short amount of time. You know, I can't imagine where you're going to be a year or two or three from now. And because it's one thing to learn a new system and a whole nother to actually implement it, which again, which is why I wanted to have you on the podcast and you're actually doing the work. And so I, I mean it when I say, I wanna thank you for that and putting the actual work that you're learning in, uh, in practical uh, application. So thank you for that. And thank you for doing this podcast. We really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. I mean, I got nothing but, but love and gratitude for you, Brandon. Yeah, well, listen, dude, uh, we'll look forward to doing this maybe again in a year from now. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you on a coaching call really soon. That sounds great. Thanks, Brandon.